So I'd like to introduce Benal Jerome to do our opening prayer. Well, the eye of Chitan, Del Bibani means me what you know, which you catch you and a banana and also the one eat over the age, what the scout think. Uh, you don't want to see the gay, I'm Mawida Isaac, a economic secret, I'm done it, I'm Kistlara or in Nela Lotimoka, after Nella Mogogua and Nanja Kisadu, after Nella Mogogua and Nevichkuva. Again, uh, now I get all the again again, also the Mangado, Bokham Kadu. เออคิดว่าเกิดเป็นเอ่อเตรียมเวลาเดียวจิตตานิโมเรียนในดิสโก้คิดว่าเดี๋ยวจิตเนกิสกูตานิโมเรียนนี่เองแล้วก็ไอ
on the annual General Assembly event page or by calling myself, Jeanette Martin, at the band at 418-759-3441. Following the AGA, all questions will be gathered and shared with the community on the website, on Facebook, and in the newsletter. Thank you all and enjoy the virtual AGA. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is John Martin. I'm Chief for the Gaskabegia First Nation. Uh, on behalf of the Council, I'd like to welcome everybody to this year's annual General Assembly. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, our uh, communications people uh, at this time that made it possible for us to hold this uh, annual General Assembly uh, by video conference. And uh, we hope that the information that our directors uh, uh, will uh, present it to you will, uh, will be useful uh, and of some assistance to you. As you may know, many programs had to be put on hold and uh, pushed uh, further back uh, as a result uh, uh, caused by the, the pandemic uh, this year. And that includes this annual report. I'd like you to keep in mind that uh, the subject of this annual General Assembly is the report for the fiscal year beginning April 1st, 2018 and ending March uh, 31st, 2019. I wanna personally thank all the directors uh, for their implication on delivering their reports on their specific departments, as well as the programs and services that they have put in place. Uh, we are happy to report that the financial health of the band remains good, and this uh, will be confirmed by the reports that the directors will be uh, presenting to you. With the new Director General uh, in place, we are sure that uh, this trend will continue in the future. I want to thank you for your patience uh, as well. Uh, because of this pandemic, uh, it's been a difficult year for, for many of you, but it's also been quite a difficult year as well uh, for the Chief and Council. Uh, it has had its impacts. Uh, the announcement on March 12th uh, by the federal and provincial governments hit everyone very hard, and no one has experienced this in recent history. The wind, you could say, got knocked out of our sails. So we were doing good uh, prior to the announcement of the, uh, of the pandemic. Many important files got delayed and almost all our focus turned to protecting the community in this COVID-19 pandemic. We are grateful for the enormous uh, efforts by health services and public security, as well as my fellow council members, which had to make some difficult uh, decisions on recommendation recommendations coming from the director's table. We understand that some freedom had to be sacrificed in order to protect the community, and it did have serious impacts on many people. None of us have ever had to deal with what we have experienced in this COVID-19 pandemic, and it's been difficult. From declaring a state of emergency to creating a bylaw, empowering the health director and public security to be able to legally act on measures, to the creation of our own color zoning, it required lo lots of collaboration between the health services, the public security, public works, as well as all the departments. We know that many of our frontline workers, including Ronnie and his crew, worked beyond normal capacity, close to burning out. And uh, let me say that your efforts were, were appreciated by, by the community. Preparing care packages and delivering these were major tasks that, and very important uh, to the well-being of the community of our members. So, during the first wave from March to June, the council met almost every day. You know, I want to take this time to thank all of our staff, the community members, the council for their precious collaboration. We have worked very hard to keep this Kabegya safe and will continue to do so as we move into 2021. As you all know, Canada has begun the delivery of the vaccine. However, it may be a little time before it reaches us and I believe our health director may have some more information uh, regarding that. Uh, in the meantime, um, uh, you know, stay safe throughout the holidays and I'd like to remind you to keep wearing your masks, keep washing your hands, and keep social distancing. Thank you. Now the directors will take over from here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Seat Pook. My name is uh, Armin Martin. I happen to be uh, one of the councillors uh, here on the Geska Bigia Res. Yeah, I've been a councillor for a few years uh, on the Res, so uh, I got a portfolio of uh, GHRDC, uh, welfare, uh, medical, uh, and then a little bit of housing here and there. And my other portfolio is uh, one of the board members of the Welcome Center we have here on the res. And uh, it's quite challenging. Uh, same as in the uh, welfare system and GHRDC and the medical, there's issues going on there all the time. But I mean, we all have to be on the same page, you know. Uh, a lot of us uh, like to rant on these here. We go on Facebook. You know, uh, if I want to rent, uh, I think I would rent uh, at a council table or one-on-one -on -one with somebody in front of the office instead of uh, going on to Facebook and whatnot, you know. Because uh, when you want to talk to somebody, you want to talk to somebody, not to 500 people. But by doing that, that's what you're really doing. So uh, it's not much. I don't think you can regulate like that, not like one-on-one -on -one person or not. Uh, anyway, I appreciate you folks uh, listening to me, and uh, sooner or later uh, we'll get back to you one way or another. Well, all your home said one. Thank you. Amanda Larock. Amanda Larock, the Director of Health and Social Services for the Giskabigia Health and Community Services. Welcome to the GHCS Annual Report for 2019-2020. The Health Centre overall supports numerous programs and services uh, related to mental health and physical health of community members. I'll be presenting to you the activities that were done throughout the year. So the administration operates out of two buildings, the health center and the healing lodge. The admin includes the uh, executive admin, admin assistant, uh, the health director assistant, the receptionist um, operating out of the two buildings. Uh, last year, we had our annual health fair. We had 180 participants. Uh, for Christmas, we delivered turkeys in partnership with uh, Public Works, uh, Ronnie's crew. They delivered 280 turkeys. We had our annual Christmas feast. Uh, we had 235 uh, community members participate at the uh, feast. At, and during the day at the feast, we have elders uh, merchandise bingo. They play cards. They have uh, arts and crafts for the children, outdoor activities, boot hockey. And we had some training that was given throughout the year as well. We had first aid. Uh, we, had t we trained 20 participants in that. We had motivational interviewing. There was 11 participants. And we had health staff training, which 40, we had 40 participants. Uh, some of the services, uh, I'll start with our clinical services. Our clinical team includes our, our head nurse, our home care nurse, our community nurse, our LPN, our personal support workers, uh, our diabetes program, our nutritionist program, and which also includes uh, the child health program, occupational therapists, physicians, uh, our visiting professionals, we have uh, the psychologists, uh, like I mentioned, our physicians, OT. In the program, we have uh, 
starting with home care, we have about 32 community members that receive this service, uh, which means follow up with uh, medication administration, wound care, uh, foot care, blood tests, flu shots. And within the program, we have an eligibility committee that meets on a, on a regular to discuss allocated time for home care uh, and domestic care clients based on uh, policy. Our domestic uh, care worker team leader also does some case management in those pro uh, in that program. The foot care service is to promote healthy f healthy feet uh, to help who have uh, serious foot problems. For example, di people who are diabetic receive this program uh, receive this service. So we had about seventy six clients in the community that that benefit from this program. Uh, we have a nutritional uh, nutrition clinics at the school, so it's workshops to teach nutrition uh, from kindergarten to grade six. Uh, last year we had 126 participants in all. Uh, we have physicians that come in uh, on a weekly. Uh, they, we have about 70 community members that uh, see the physicians here at the health center or the physicians go visit the elders at their home. Uh, we have community medical clinics, so it's primary care, prevention care, treatment of chronic uh, conditions, and we service about 100, uh, 1,160 clients throughout the year. Uh, we have a nutrition clinic, so it's teaching to support community members with nutrition, referrals to other professionals. The nutritionist has about 30 clientele. They also, the MCH program, the Maternal Child Health Program, offers children wellness, so it's growth, development, nurse, uh, nursing referrals to other professionals, follow-ups uh, from 0 to 17 years old. Uh, our diabetic educator has uh, some programs throughout the year. One of the one of the programs she offers is the Bigger Loser Challenge, which promotes healthy lifestyle, uh, helps individuals achieve their weight loss. It includes uh, challenges, nutrition classes to, to provide more education and prevention in terms of their health. So we had 76 participants um, last year. Our annual flu clinic uh, was a success. We had vaccinated 262. Uh, the Kohai program, which is for uh, dental hygienists, had 62 participants where they go make visits at the daycare, head start, and school. Uh, physiotherapy, uh, there was follow-up with 20 clients in the community. Breastfeeding clinic, there was five uh, moms that participated in that. We had early childhood intervention, which is three, year, three to four years old, is screening uh, for preschool. Uh, we had eight participants last year in speech therapy throughout the year. There's 12 clients that received a service. So next will be our wellness prevention team. Um, the health center continues to offer different programs and activities to community members that promote physical wellness and healthy lifestyles uh, using traditional knowledge and practices are continually integrated into programs and activities offered by the prevention team. So last year we had our annual science camp, summer camp, and cultural camp, uh, which started from the age of five years old to 12 years old. Uh, each camp, uh, the science camp had 20 children, five, year, five to six year olds. Summer camp was three weeks for six to nine year olds. There was 30 children that participated in that. Cultural camp had 30 children as well, 10 to 12 years old. Uh, that was a cultural camp that they had, uh, they do sweet grass picking, uh, daily smudging, uh, walks, uh, look, learning about the medicines that are in the community, learn about different types of ceremonies. They did activities, uh, creating medicine wheels, um, the uh, dream catchers, they went fishing, canoeing, making loose skin again, those types of activities. At the end of uh, each summer camp, uh, we always host a family day. Uh, so last year we hosted at the ball field where we have games and activities with the children, uh, parents and children. Uh, a barbecue, we start off with a barbecue. So last year we had 210 participants. We also promote physical fitness and uh, try to promote our athletes. So last year we had the, we've been participating in the Nova Scotia Miguel Summer Games. Last year we sent 16 athletes. They participated in basketball and girls volleyball. Uh, the boys basketball team actually won the championship. They brought home the gold, uh, the gold medals. The girls made it to the semifinals. 
Also, they have the North American Indigenous Indigenous Games is a multi sport involving North American North American Indigenous people from all over North America. Uh, we had three boys uh, who tried out for the Eastern Door basketball team and actually made the team. It was postponed due to COVID nineteen. They also have uh, weekly beating classes. There was four hundred twenty eight visits throughout the year. Uh, traditional dance classes. There was 30 participants. At the end of that program, there was a, a children's powwow that was hosted and we had 203 community members uh, come to the uh, powwow. They have arts and crafts twice a week. There was 520 visits. Intergenerational cooking uh, is a partnership with the daycare and Head Start that go to the uh, elders meals on Wednesdays to participate and interact with the elders. This program served 1,256 meals. The youth centers open seven days a week. Uh, they also offer the gym uh, six days a week. There was 2,558 youth visits uh, last year. Weekly swimming and enrichment is another partnership we have with the swimming pool and enrichment. We had 13, on average, 13 participants per week. Uh, the rink uh, is only seasonal. Um, but last year we had 546 visits during uh, the time the rink was open. So our social service team, moving on. Uh, the, team, the team includes a family support worker, Jordan's principal, youth protection evaluation, youth protection follow-up, uh, psychosocial uh, interventions, counseling referrals made to uh, therapists and uh, counseling as well. Uh, last year, the team uh, partnered up with other teams within the organization and made Christmas baskets for uh, for vulnerable clients. There was 42 care packages made. Uh, there was youth protection training given to the Gescabella Police Department. There was six participants. The Munchkin program is offered once a week. There was 185 youth visits. Cooking classes for child and parent activity together. There was 19 participants. There was yoga once a week. There was 22 participants, and Jordan's principal had 67 cases approved last year. Uh, our mental wellness team services NADAP, services addictions, uh, psychosocial counseling, referrals for mental health, mental health follow-up. Some of the activities they did last year was the annual suicide breakfast. 189 community members uh, received a breakfast. They have tutoring for students. Uh, and youth and family clients. There was 32 sessions. There was AA within Gescabegia. There was 30, 32 sessions, 80 participants. Uh, they also go to Camelton for AA. Uh, there was 18 sessions, 58 participants. Uh, they had their annual NA Week, National Addiction, Addictions Awareness Week. The activities that week included a sober gala. There was 21 participants. Workshops at the Wechukobinia School on healthy boundaries and relationships. 29 students participated. We had a presentation by Dr. Potter in regards to the methadone program. There was 11 participants. Uh, there was a, a man who came to give a presentation, a guest speaker, Joey Stiles from out west. There was 115 participants. And we had a family brunch, which was 37 participants. They also go to the Nurchman High School to do lunch and learn. There was 44 participants. Mental health lunch and learns for the community. There was 230 participants in total. Uh, tobacco cessation, there was 14 participants. Moving on to our domestic support team, which is very is uh, works closely with the home care program. Um, and works with the prevention team in providing the uh, weekly lunches. They had a, a couple other activities. They had an Elders Appreciation Day lunch uh, that was held outside in front of the uh, health center. There was 63 participants. They also service approximately 32 community members that benefit from this program. Last but not least, our medical transportation. Our medical transportation includes two tra uh, transportation drivers, our medical transportation team leader. Day service, uh, this program is offered by the NIHB program with uh, Health Canada, now ISC. Uh, medical transportation runs include long distance, uh, short term, long term. Day service NADAP clients with, uh, in a partnership with Mawiomi and Walkwan. 
there was a total of 14, 1,404 medical transportations, transportation runs. Uh, broken down uh, locally, uh, our drivers did 996 of those runs. 408 were personal travel and reimbursement. So with that being said, uh, Valalio, thank you for listening. I'm uh, wishing you all the very best this year. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for logging into our 2020 virtual AGA. 2020 has been a very trying year for everyone. We want to thank you all for being so patient throughout the year. We've all been asked to adjust to a new normal. This global pandemic has impacted our whole lives. Measures have been imposed, restrictions have been put in place, but we are a strong, resilient community. This pandemic has also impacted council as well. They had to shuffle many of their priorities, but rest assured, the work was not put on hold. The process may have slowed down, but work continued. You will see with the director's presentation that the work did go on. The directors have continued to work on their priorities that they have been mandated to. All the directors from the different departments will be presenting a report on their programs and on the accomplishments that they have achieved for 2019-2020. Thank you. Will Aliak. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Francine Ross. I'm the financial controller for the last five years. In 2019-2020, we globally had a very good year. We made surplus. It, for that, we were able to uh, support and give the, the services to the community uh, as usual. In finance, we had uh, different objectives. And the main one is to improve the management system to meet the requirement to to keep the five-year grant and to access new programs. Uh, first, we modified our accounting system. We had a long list of implementation to do, uh, for example, uh, electronic PO, uh, integrate uh, cost of production, uh, change the payroll system, and keep track on capital asset. Uh, second, we completer, completed an action plan uh, we started uh, to implement uh, last fiscal, but we still do it. And third, we are working closely with the FNB and uh, MNP to reorganize the finance department. By March 2020, I will say we were only at the beginning of the process. It will take at least one more year to achieve. Uh, we continue, we are on the good track, and by the end of the prison fiscal, I hope that we will achieve at least uh, 80%.
Good afternoon. My name is Anik Jacob. I am your new HR manager. Um, I am replacing Francois Lapointe. Uh, I've started working for the Micmacs of Gaskepegag in uh, at the end of January of this year. Uh, I bring to the table several years of experience in human resources management and um, I have the pleasure of uh, talking to you about what Frank said, uh, left when, um, uh, to me upon his departure. So um, last year we had five major objectives. One was to review and develop HR policies and procedures. Uh, the second one was to acquire a human resources information system. Uh, the third was to develop different HR processes, integrating uh, traditional Mi'kmaq practices, uh, develop a new integration package for new employees, and implement an employee performance management system across the board uh, so that it would be fair and equitable. Policies are currently being reviewed by a chief and council. Um, so as soon as they have approved those policies, uh, they will be integrated in everything else that has uh, HR involvement in uh, them. Uh, second of all, we have purchased a integrated HR system, uh, which is a timekeeping system, system as well as a human resources information system. Uh, they will both work in concordance with our accounting software, and it should uh, simplify our lives and the employees of the Micmax of Gaskepegergi's life as well. Uh, we're walking away from a paper-heavy process. We also have, uh, being culturally sensitive, we also have integrated some of the traditions in our way of approaching uh, HR. Uh, two of these uh, that I can uh, think of right now are the seven sacred teachings and the talking circle which helps a lot in mediating conflicts between employees or between administration and employees. Uh, we are, um, uh, we start having a structure for uh, our integration package or orientation package, which uh, as soon as the HR policies are adopted, uh, you should see uh, um, them trickle down uh, at your level. Um, we uh, have uh, been approved with our employee performance management system. All of our employees have gone through uh, information systems. All of the directors, managers, supervisors have gone through a two-day training sessions. Uh, the newest members to our team will receive that training before April of 2021 because that's when uh, we are going to start applying uh, the um, performance appraisal. Uh, so all in all, this is what HR uh, delivered last year and hopefully um, more will come 2020-2021 annual integration plan. Thank you very much.
Kwe. I'm Christiane Bernard. I'm the portfolio officer for the Forestry Natural Resources. Um, so I'll just give you a brief overview of what Ken Arsenal, the forestry director, will be presenting. So he will be reporting on the mechanical and manual harvesting, the brush cutting, the firewood, road cleaning, and plantation crew. And he will talk a little bit about the uh, partnership between Adult Ed and the tree planting. So uh, you can view Mr. Arsenal's presentation on forestry. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ken Arsano. I'm uh, the director of the forestry department. Uh, today I will do you my 2019-20 uh, uh, year review. Uh, at first, uh, if we take a look at the department organization, 2019-20, um, you have to remember that's not the currently year, it's the last year. So uh, the counselor responsible of the natural resource were uh, Christian Bernard and Gary Luc Martin. Uh, I was I'm the forestry director. Uh, I was also responsible of the the harvesting. So I was the manager of the ar harvesting for the brush cutting crew. I was having uh, Mario Babin as uh, the foreman and uh, Shirley Italien as a form as a forest technician. Also on special project manager, uh, it was uh, it was Eric Boudreau. Uh, the accomplishment that we did in 2019-20. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll regroup my. Uh, my department in tree, I got uh, my harvesting, also my brush cutting crew, and also I'll call it my uh, special project that include uh, firewood, road cleaning, plantation crew. So uh, for uh, mechanical and uh, manual harvesting, our main client is uh, Temrex. We cut almost uh, 15,000 uh, cubic meter of wood uh, just to make you know, it's around 370 truck load of wood, just to take, give you an, uh, what it is. Uh, as a revenue on this, uh, on this activity, it was uh, 937,000 and the expenses were 9,015,000. Uh, so, uh, and yeah, we have an excess of 22,000 on this activity. On this activity, we had uh, eight workers. Three were coming from uh, the reserve. They were actually the three uh, manual harvester. Uh, they did uh, uh, mainly 28 weeks of work. For a brush cutting crew, our uh, main uh, client is uh, Rex Forêt. Uh, last year, we did uh, 97 hectare of uh, Cutting. So, if you can, to give you an example, the old reserve is 215 hectare. So, we did almost half of the area that covered the reserve. Uh, revenue were 175,000. Uh, expensive was uh, 197,000. And uh, we did a deficit on this activity of 21,000. Uh, actually, we had eight workers that were uh, on this crew and seven workers were coming from uh, Gesgepe Gag. They worked for uh, 19 weeks. Uh, on my special project, we did, uh, as we do every year, firewood. Uh, last year, we did almost 400 cord uh, of firewood for uh, elder and uh, people from the, the reserve. Uh, this crew also did uh, some, uh, we did a medicinal trail on Gesgepe Gag for uh, economic development. And also last year we try with, uh, we do a joint uh, venture with the Coop de Gaspésie and uh, adult education of Gesgepe Gag. 
and uh, we are uh, eight students for uh, six weeks to do plantation. Uh, it went well, uh, kids uh, enjoy it and uh, we'll try to do it again. Uh, on this activity, I had uh, 20, 20 workers, 19 were coming from Gizgepe Gag, and depending of where they work, they work between uh, 16 and 26 uh, weeks. Uh, at the end, uh, overall, uh, our department did a whole of uh, 52,000 for uh, the first three departments. Challenges and opportunity. Uh, in the next year, uh, we have a lack of worker in forestry right now, so we need some worker. We'll uh, try to uh, have uh, activity to uh, make some worker come again in forestry, mainly in, uh, in brush cutter. So uh, also, as an opportunity in the next year, uh, there's, there are always increasing the amount of tree that uh, we plant each, each year. So maybe there's an opportunity there with uh, the adult education that we did uh, last year. Also, there will be uh, probably some commercial volume that will be uh, available in the next year because right now we're in uh, spruce bug infestation and uh, probably uh, in the next year or next few year uh, they will do ministry will do a special plan to recover those trees that are infected and if we not cut them uh, they will uh, they will rotten in the woods so there will be probably more wood to cut in there, so there's maybe an opportunity there to do to do more wood. Uh, also, uh, for next year, uh, the first three department will have to do a call for tender for a, an harvesting uh, contractor. So we had uh, the same contractor for a couple of years, but uh, the administration law of Gesgepe Gag change, and uh, when we have to do a contract for more than twenty-five thousand, we have to do a call for tender. So I'm working on that. Uh, also, I uh, will try to have uh, more uh, Micmac worker. And uh, last, uh, we'll try, uh, we'll have to propose a Micmac camp policy on crowd and land. So we'll try to develop a policy on the, for the, the, the Micmac camp on crown land. So uh, that, was, uh, that was the report for uh, the forestry department of uh, 2000. 1920. Thank you very much. Christiane Bernard. I'm the Portfolio Officer for Economic Development and I will introduce some of the projects that um, Economic Development has been working on, not in detail but in summary. Um, the Director Holly LaRock will present it in, in more detail but I'll give you a brief summary of some of the activities. So I started working with the department um, during the retreat planning for for the year and the five-year plan the and they, they also invited me to participate in a five-year strategic plan so they invited the portfolio counselors to participate in their five-year strategic planning along with all of their employees and some consultants they'd plan to do consultations with the community, but due to COVID, unfortunately, they couldn't do the consultations, so they made a video 
of the um, of the work that was done and it's on our social media page and on our website for about a month now so if you want to look at it you can take a look at it on our social media and our website uh, so that was one of the first things that the department did at the beginning of the year. Another thing that they were doing is uh, land use planning. So they got fun they got funding approval for a three year project for land use planning. Uh, another project that they got funding for was a solar panel project, which is at La Cache. It's a pilot project that was approved and funded through Natural Resource Canada. They're in partnership with FNQL, SDI, and Nergica. So they developed a project together, and in the second rounds, they were the first choice for funding for a solar panel project, which uh, construction has already started. And so they also completed, they had funding in a project, a three-year project for the chalets, upgrades, renovations, landscaping. So they also completed that uh, in the last fiscal year. They also had the community park project, which is the medicinal walking trail and the, um, the we know it as the powwow grounds. So they did some uh, restoration. They, they created the walking trail. I think they had... Um, they have built permanent seating so there's quite a few things that holly will talk more about in detail that, that they also did and then they also had a small project for the veterans exhibit so that in summary is some of the projects that economic development did last year and holly will give more details or if you have questions uh, she can answer your questions well i'll leave. Hi, my name is Holly LaRock. I'm the Director of Economic Development and Lands. So this year for entrepreneurial support, um, the Gesco Bigia Economic Development Fund Policy, it works as a framework for entrepreneurs in the community. Um, this allows access to startup and expansion funding through grant funding, um, allowing that community members meet certain criteria for the eligibility and submit um, business plans with financial documents. The department um, also assists with this. Entrepreneurship, so throughout the fiscal 1920, the Active and Lands Department ensured entrepreneurial support through our ongoing partnership with YES Montreal. We've been a partner with YES for the last four years. Uh, this is their traveling business coach that comes to Gascobigia a few times a year to meet with um, our clients. These outreach services from the provincial level assist with consistent, uh, consistency in business development. Services are always readily available through the department for all community members looking to grow and develop a business. Services include meeting with aspiring or current entrepreneurs, evaluating their needs, directing them towards relevant sources. The retail strip mall projects, so the department uh, wants to be able to offer office space to community members for small businesses as well as um, retail space. So there was a call for tenders to complete a feasibility study for this project and um, phase one has been done. We're still waiting for the completed document. So job creation and workplace training. During the last fiscal year, the department promoted several job positions for community members. Many of these positions were made possible thanks to uh, DEC, GHRDC, and ISC. Um, positions ranged from customer service or innovations, project assistance, lands, and the continuance of developing our tourism sector. So throughout the year, um, economic development and lands has taken various steps to secure partnerships, regional level exchange, resulted with Gescobigia partnering with uh, snowmobile clubs for the cash, uh, the focus on tourism. Um, so our tourism strategic plan was approved and we started implemented, 
I'm implementing that as well as a promotional partnership with Hotel Bay Blue and Arnoir Energy for the new gassing system at the cache. The tri-cultural event. So since November 2018, the tourism manager and coordinator were part of a Nassessiac Weed 3 festival. This festival is a celebration of the three cultures found in the west portion of the Bay de Chalet. So English, French, and Mi'kmaq. Uh, Gaskabigia was chosen to host the Nassessiac Festival in 2020. This Nassessiac Planning Committee will aim, uh, continue aiming at celebrating. So the chalet renovations were completed this fiscal year. A fin final report will be submitted to SAA for the last installment for the funding. Um, related to cash, operations continued focusing on the peak seasons which are snowmobile, fishing, and hunting season. Uh, in order to assure the long-term success of the cash, the department planned a phase two project for, the, for this business. This project was submitted and approved, um, which includes a new gas system, a new generator, and a landscaping beautification plan. This project has employed several community members. Uh, Gaskabigia was chosen number one out of several applicants for a second round submission through Natural Resource Canada, which will um, allow the funding for a clean energy solar panel project for the cash. So the clean energy project, uh, as mentioned, is currently working towards structuring a renewable, ener uh, renewable energy project in partnership with FNQ LSDI and Nergica. So the clean energy project for the cash, um, as mentioned, is a renewable energy project that will be in partnership with FNQ LSDI and Nergica. The department applied on behalf of the Micmacs of Gaskabagia and were selected through NRCAN for the clean energy for rural and remote communities funding program. So the electricity at the cache is currently produced by diesel generators, which is polluting the environment uh, extremely costly and have been unreliable. So the purpose of this project is to replace these diesel generators with a microgrid solar system uh, consisted of solar panels and batteries. So the expected results are going to be 80 to 100% renewable energy it's going to create several job opportunities for community members and um, there will be a training portion of the project to operate this um, new system. So the department supported the initial um, framework for a land use plan for Gaskabigia. Actions within this plan recommended business growth management, mapping our residential and development areas and protecting our natural environment. So to initiate this, it includes uh, the composition of a land use planning task force and uh, a land use planning policy will be the result of, of the project. So a job posting went up for a land use planning coordinator in this fiscal year. The coordinator was hired in Q4. Their main objectives will be um, to develop this land use plan uh, with the assistance of a land use planning task force. So it'll, there will be several community consultations um, in the development of this land policy. Um, for lands, estates, and membership, we hired full-time this year in July. Um, she took several trainings through the National Aboriginals Lands Management Association. So she's assisted in an interim land allocation policy. She will also be helping with the land use planning project. And um, her normal services will continue, has continued. So our five-year strategic plan was established in 2015 and it was until March 31st, tw um, 2020. So in 2015, it was established that the community and elected leadership ship seen a value in economic development uh, to create more opportunities to increase own source revenues 
and to secure more employment for the Mi'kmaqs of Giscabilla, um, but the importance of maintaining Mi'kmaq traditional values. So this process was led by the department with the help of consultants MNP. Um, they're the experts of economic development on a national level. So with several community engagement sessions and input from members, the 1520 strat plan was created. Um, in 2019, we initiated a bidding, a bidding process for the creation of a new five-year plan, and um, MNP was selected again to lead this consultation with the community, <coughs> excuse me, in the department, uh, as well as portfolio counselors. So this draft will be presented in the following fiscal year. So the Economic Development Corporation, as for Gescabigia Economic Development Strategic Plan, the building block that the community and elected leadership had established as a priority was the continuation of current and future businesses in Gescabigia. One of those objectives was to implement the developed Economic Development Corporation structure and define roles and responsibilities of chief and council within this structure. MNP made a visit to give a refresher training on the uh, Economic Development Corporation. So the establishment of an Economic Development Corporation will help govern and manage the Mi'kmaqs of Gescabigia's businesses to meet the needs of the community while pursuing new opportunities that will help generate wealth and employment opportunities for Gescabigia. So thank you for listening. Walalio. Mm -hmm. Hi, Christiane Bernard. Uh, I am the Portfolio Officer for Fisheries. Uh, last year, I'd like to begin by saying that we hired a new director, Christina Burnsett. So she's been working in the Fisheries Department since September of last year in 2019. So welcome to our team, uh, Christina. And I'd like to take this time to acknowledge our former director, Virginia Martin, who dedicated so many years to the Mi'kmaqs of Gescabegia and her services in the fisheries department and she's she accomplished so much during her time with the fisheries department. Last year they in honor of her they named a vessel after her in 2019. So thank you to Virginia's family and um, just like to take this time to acknowledge all the amazing work that she did in uh, in fisheries over the course of many years. So I will give you a brief overview of some of the things that Fisheries has done and accomplished in the last fiscal year. Uh, although Christina Burnsight will give you more detail in the, the types of activities that they did last year. So just a brief overview of what she will introduce um, regarding the um, lobster hut. It was a successful year. Uh, they had some challenges, they bought some new equipment, and they provided some training for their employees. For the lobster wholesale, um, they supplied the lobster hut and two other fish markets. For the inshore lobster vessel, um, some new boats have to be purchased, and they provided the the lobsters for our local fish market. For 
um, the Midshore, Midshore Fisheries, they have five vessels and they also had a successful year and they caught alder quota this year. So that is just a basic summary of some of the activities that uh, fisheries has completed in the last fiscal year. Like every other department, they also had their challenges due to COVID. Um, I was, as the portfolio counselor, I was also involved in uh, some of their strategic planning and some of their activities. Um, but uh, for more details, I will uh, listen to Christina Burns' presentation on the activities. And if you have any questions, just uh, ask your questions to uh, Ms. Christina Burns. Thank you. So before um, I let Christina do her presentation, uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all the departments and all the workers. Although every single worker at the Micmacs of Gescabegia is essential for the success of our community, I'd like to thank everybody. But I'd like to th take this opportunity to give a special thanks to the departments that uh, I'm working with. In forestry, the brush cutting crew, harvesting crew, firewood crew, road cleaning crew, and plantation crew. And in the economic development economic development and lands, I'd like to thank the whole department and the tourism department, the, the chalets and, and the cash uh, for all your work. And for the fisheries, I'd like to thank the whole department, the midshore, the midshore fishermen, the inshore fishermen, the lobster hut workers, and the wholesale workers. Um, it's you guys, all the workers that make the departments a success and uh, thank you very much and I wish that you guys all have an amazing holiday and I hope that in 2021 our year is much better because in 2020 we faced tons of challenges which, which held us back but uh, I'm hoping for 2021 to be nothing but success, collaboration and um, the community working together. Thank you. Christina Burnsett, I'm the Director of Fisheries. I started in September 16, 2019. My portfolio counselors are Gary Luke Martin and Christiane Jerome Bernard. Uh, we include them in a lot of our uh, strategic planning and um, keep them updated on what's going on in fisheries. Um, the vision and mission of our fisheries is to uh, continuously striving to uphold the highest of safety for our crew, be leaders for conservation and responsible management of the species, seeing that is, that is part of who we are in our culture is conservation and not overkill of our stock, as well as diversification of our fishery species and employee capacity building. Encouraging capacity building for all our members, it's important because fisheries is one of the quickest and uh, largest growing um, industries in our community. So we need to start from the ground up and continuously build the capacity of our members so that they can be the ones to be employed in our industry. Um, in our five-year strategic plan as well, it's uh, one of the items was to increase profits, which opens up access to more employment specific for our community and its members, as well as to broaden our visibility and access to the regional markets with our fishing species. Um, some of the activities that occurred over the year um, will go about in our pres my presentation. Um, so we'll start with uh, the type of funding that um, fisheries receives uh, from DFO. So in 2019, DFO funded our AFS funding for administration and some of the travel for the administrative uh, head of the office and a fleet supervisor. DFO also has a program which is called ACFI and we use component four for the building, the rebuild and the equipment in the lobster hut and mid-short equipment. 
The egg fee component 2.3 was for a consultant we hired for the wholesale uh, feasibility study with the intent that maybe we would like to relocate our wholesale. That was part of our strategic plan as well. Um, whether we're going to realize that in the next year or so, that's to be determined, especially with the COVID incident that we're dealing with in the pandemic. Our, we received funding for ACFI, and this is for training and capacity building, and it's for refresher courses. So this year we uh, tapped into those dollars to offer a CPR and um, MED course, as well as some of the refresher course for the midshore people who are waiting, we're waiting to write their watch keepers certification. Uh, we received some funding through GHRDC for uh, ethics and etiquette workshop, which we uh, tailored towards the lobster hut employees. So fisheries administrative overview for 2019-20. We employed a total of 57 employees, 50 of our members, and six non-natives. We also launched our um, new vessel, the Virginia Audrey, which was in honor of the former director, Virginia Martin. Um, we've seen a new director start September 16, 2019. Fleet supervisor, our fleet supervisor was appointed to sit on a small fishing vessel safety committee as the Indigenous representative. Three of our midshore guys completed their watchkeeper certifications and we'd like to extend our congratulations to Dwight Jerome, Marvin Condo Jr. and Terry Condo. And we hope to see more of our midshore crews complete their certifications and actually see more become captains as well. We also teamed up with our local FNRAEC, which is the Adult Education Department, which is uh, housed in our building. And we sat with them to develop courses and workshops that were geared towards our Lobster Hut employees. And those are the type of courses that we were looking to um, help with the customer service, um, just to put Gescabegak on the map to say that this is a product of Gescabegak and then be able to bring a story to the customer. Also the etiquette and ethics of uh, working as well. So those were components that were developed with our partner. Um, we were able to realize most of those uh, workshops within the season. We also felt that a mental health component was important because um, there's always some type of barrier that uh, prevents people from fulfilling their work obligations sometimes. So if we can uh, provide that help and service for them, then we're helping develop their work ethics, their etiquette, as well as their capacity and skills to be able to go to work every day and be healthy. We also initiated solidarity contract with LMG with their fall fisheries. We feel it's important to support our uh, our brother and sister community, Mi'kmaq communities that are tap, are fishing the fall fisheries and managing their own lobster fisheries. So we donated lobster to the community feast at the school, which we were able to purchase uh, from our, our sister community and support their fall fisheries. In 2019, we also did a lobster distribution for Christmas in December of 2019, which it's been a while since the whole community was able to uh, enjoy lobster. We have a partnership with Sulawag, which was developed over the years with um, our Aram body, which is a GEM, and um, they use our lobster facility to take the kelp that they um, cultivate and uh, make it into relishes and um, distribute it to restaurants and stuff. So we also were able to offer them uh, one of our employees who worked at the lobster hut and extended his employment. So fisheries opportunities and challenges for 2019 and 20. Our opportunities were growth, diversification, and expansions of other areas of our fisheries. So there's always the opportunity to expand on our fisheries as well as to grow it and to tap into other species and maybe lease out less of our, our licenses.
Again, we need the capacity building, so that is something we like to uh, continuously th thrive to uh, ensure that our members are, are getting trained and be able to work in our facilities. Other opportunities are partnerships and exploring with the AGAM and the aquaculture. There's all kinds of opportunity. Uh, this year they had a salmon tagging program. We were not able to uh, offer any of our employees to them, but those are areas that we would like to pursue and offer our services in helping out, as well as building the mentorship and the capacity of our members. Other opportunities, again, building the capacity and skills through mentoring and on-the-job training. Uh, we have those partners. We can always use them to implement this. So some of the challenges we face in fisheries is getting our people trained. Fishing on a boat or out in the water is not for everyone, and our population is young. And getting this generation interested and skilled in the workforce can be a challenge. Um, the thing is that people think that Fisheries is just being out on a boat and fishing some type of species, but it isn't. There's all kinds of other opportunity available and that we can start to expand and offer. So inshore lobster vessels for 2019, an overview. Uh, fisheries paid all the deckhands, 11 in total. The semi-independent three vessel captains pay the majority of gas and bait, their total catch of 195,899 pounds, which represents 17% of their revenue was put back into the fisheries profits. Our, our ban lobster fishermen, all expenses are paid by fisheries. Captains are paid 35% of the catch per vessel. Their total catch this season is 113,928 pounds. So they had a successful season. 17 individuals were employed during the season for this sector, which is the lobster fisheries. Uh, 2019 motor was fixed and placed on the underpowered vessel. The other two Honda motors were sold off. The money that we got for the sale on those will be used to go towards the purchase of a new motor for the 2021 season, which will be placed on the boat that has the 2012 motor. We have a few repairs that need to be done as well. Um, there's some issues with the hauler motor. It often needs to be replaced, so we need to come up with some strategic ways of trying to prevent um, the salt from eroding it and actually the winter snow as well. New measures imposed for color coding for ropes for 2020 season. Um, affected our 2019 season because we had to buy the type of twine and colors for the rope and have them sewn in based on uh, DFO's uh, requirements. In short, opportunities and challenges. The opportunities we seen or see are full utilization of unused or leased out licenses. So we see that there's the opportunity to actually possibly use all of our licenses and lease out less of our, our licenses and maybe create longer term employment for our, most of our deckhands, possibly a training vessel. There's all kinds of possibilities we can look into. Uh, there's possibility of more training and employment for people as well especially those that might be interested in just trying out for the inshore fisheries because it's not as demanding as being out on the water for three to seven days. Some of the challenges we faced in the inshore was the need to invest in new equipment. Uh, three of the current vessels are becoming a safety concern, need to be replaced. Um, this has been an issue since 2016. Um, not all fishermen are interested in exploring other species as well, so that is why oftentimes our licenses are leased out to other fishermen. Regulations and measures imposed gear replacement become costly, so that's another challenge. We have no reserve replacement fund for any of the gear and vessels in inshore, so it can be a challenge to have last minute changes to and modifications to our gear. Our lobster hut, our lobster retail employed six workers and two students. It was pretty successful for selling lobster of a total of 39 
1,299 pounds were sold in the 2019 season. They also had different species for sale. It was the first year. However, there was some issues with the ventilation system on the freezer. So some of one of the uh, freezers broke down and we lost all the items in the freezers. A claim was submitted to insurance in 2019. We didn't have word if our claim had been accepted and in the 2020 year, yes, it was not accepted. So if we look at the overall financial part of Lobster Hut, we were, will see a deficit. We were able to purchase a double freezer as well as a new display. Uh, that did not come out of money that we had. Our We were only required to inject 10% of the cost of that. So we were able to get funding through DFO to bring in those new equipment as well as to have the ventilation system redone and this will be resolved. Um, the storefront door, we were not able to have that installed to the COVID restrictions. So the company that was to come in and make our facility more inviting to people and look like a store was affected by this COVID. However, that is one of our goals for the new year is to have that install. We also had workshop for employees at the ethics and etiquette as well as customer service and we will offer the mental health component in the new season. Lobster Hut opportunities and challenges. The opportunities were to provide them with training tailored to staffing needs. Uh, there's a high turnover in staffing and we just feel that it needs to be something that we provide them annually so that they develop those skills for a business and to deal with customers as well as to promote the history of Gescabella and also have a self-care component. Other opportunities is the processing of other species. There's enough room in the extended part of our lobster hut to be able to process our own, some of our own um, species and be able to offer a, a broader range of um, fish that we actually catch and, and process within our own facility. Other opportunities, we improving the software, make training in, tracking inventory and sales easier, uh, simplifying tasks, making it efficient and less manual labor. And the opportunity for this is to bring in some smaller scale equipment so that it's easier for the employees to pluck the lobster and also to eliminate the waste of weak lobster. So if we're bringing in equipment, we can, it's less manual, it's, a, it's equipment they can use to do this for them. And it also helps with um, less waste. Another opportunity would be product branding that represents Geska Big Yuck. We would like a product that we can expand in the markets that come specifically from our fishermen. And we would, we are thinking some type of lobster pate as well as a, a pluck lobster frozen package that contains the the claws, the leg, the knuckles, and have the tails available raw to and frozen to other restaurants. Some of the challenges that we face with the lobster hut is the flaw in design of the ventilation system. The electrical system is not industrialized. The septic system is residential. So we often have a lot of issues with those type of things. We often have breakers that trip on us. There's not enough voltage going in for all of the big equipment that we have and the big equipment that we've brought in. So we, that's a challenge. And the septic system means we often have to get it drained because it's very small. Other challenges needs to be inviting. Again, the storefront door. However, we hope to have that resolved before the 2020 season. Other challenges are high turnover in staff. So we're trying to offer ways to be more supportive of our staff and by offering these ethics and etiquette courses and the mental health component as well as the customer service, we're able to find a way to follow them all the way through their employment and hopefully have a better success rate each season with them and them want to return along with the uh, making their task a little less manual. So I think that'll help.
Scheduling needs to improve because it seems like our scheduling is uh, makes for burnout for our employees, even though they only work 16 to 18 weeks, I believe the lobster at works. And other challenges, waste and maximizing the use of species. So with the opportunities and the equipment that we're bringing in, we're hoping to minimize that and have zero waste no more dead lobster. So our lobster wholesale, we employed one driver, one manager, one general worker, and one student. So we had in 2019, there was only four workers. They provided lobster to Lobster Hut and the two local fish markets. Lobster Wholesale also holds most of the lobster for sale at the lot that is to be sold out of the lobster hut. And it is um, so that we can keep our hut operational longer. They do not have an adequate purging system, can only hold right now in 2019, 2000 pounds. The mortality rate, we are working on scenarios to improve, improve and reduce this. The issue stems from lobster hut storing and handling, and there's a low rate prior to transport. So right there, we know that somewhere along the line, the mortality rate has, or the handling has to be improved or the transport so that we have a less mortality rate. And with the bringing in of this equipment, I'm sure we will have better success with less dead lobster. Lobster wholesale opportunities and challenges. The opportunity is to expand of our facility as well as the number of staff that we have. Upgrading of current system, have a purging unit, increase the amount of holding for livestock for distribution and sales, and provide safer work options at this facility. So the opportunity is to be able to expand and hold more lobster, but there are challenges that we need to work out as well. One, there's not enough storage in our facility or not enough freezer space. We have a shared facility with the most butchering program. Local drop off of lobster, big truck does the big drops to the main buyer. So the smaller fish markets need to wait. Um, and the cost and pricing that we have established with our buyer can be a challenge as well as the market. Not enough staff, uh, purging need system needed. The filtration system needs bigger, needs to be bigger, need to improve in order to hold more lobsters. So those are some of the challenges we face with the lobster wholesale. Made sure fisheries, we employed one fleet supervisor, 20 men on percentage, and five replacements during the shrimp season. All of the five uh, shrimp replacements are able to have a spot on the, each boat during this fishing. We have five vessels, three fish, no crab, and shrimp, the other two are interchangeable per species, but have the same crew. And it was the maiden voyage of the Virginia Audrey. And these vessels uh, also fish the sea cucumber as well as some of the other species that we have licenses for. The season was a success. The quotas caught for 2019. Snow crab, we caught 1,054,474. Shrimp, we caught a million, 579,704 pounds. And the sea cucumber, we caught 346,850 pounds. It was the last season with Herman Sinat, our su fleet supervisor, mentor. He is retiring. He's been with us for 20 years. So we bid him a, a good retirement and he will be very missed. Much work was needed on the vessels and some equipment replacement. Domega, we rebuilt the motor. Amstel, the fuel pump was upgraded and a replacement of drum net to roll the shrimp trawl. And the end molly, a new shrimp trawl was purchased as well as other smaller items that uh, are, are easily eaten away at by this salty water. Made sure opportunities and challenges, the opportunities, Maximum use of all five fleets, training and capacity building, and hopefully more of our guys are becoming interested in being captains as well as those that are trainees or just deckhands become watch keepers and others type of certification. Other opportunities, scope out and utilize other licenses, possibly utilize the licenses we do have instead of leasing them out. Some of the challenges we face in the midshore is the right whale, the ice committee in Karakut, 
they decide opening of snow crab season. And one of the big issues is, is that in our area where our men fish, the ice is open two to three weeks earlier than that of Karaket. However, Karaket has an ice committee and they decide the opening date of the snow crab. Other challenges with the right whale is that the sooner we get out, the less likely we're to bump into a right whale or have them entangled in our gear. So other challenges are gear changes due to the right whale. Measures imposed by DFO can be costly because of the entanglements that have occurred over the last couple years. Um, we may not always be knowledgeable of all the fishing licenses and zones in the sense that it's a challenge for us to be able to fish all of our, all the species because maybe that's an issue as well. It also is not an easy job. Many try out but do not last and the season can be quite long so it's not cut out for everybody. So that's a challenge to get people interested in wanting to fish on our vessels out there. So in order to maximize the use of all of our licenses in our fleet, we need a crew and we need members to be able to go out there who have the training in order to fish. So activities planned for the 2020 21 year is one, to meet with the Audit and Finance Committee and secure a replacement reserve funds. Our vessels are quite old. Um, many of our vessels are between 20 and 30 years old. They need to be replaced. In order to replace them, it's very costly, so we need to identify a reserve replacement fund on the amount of uh, profit that we receive at the end of each year and set aside a reserve fund to be able to replace those in the next five years. We'd like to purchase a fisheries truck and a forklift, a uh, replacement of the lobster boat and the motor on the boat, sorry, the boats and a motor on one of the boats, a uh, replacement of the lobster vessels that have been a safety concern since the 2016-17 year. Other activities will be to meet with the lobster fishermen as was in the strategic plan and objective since 2017. Hopefully come up with something that is more favorable to everybody. Capacity building for all aspects of fisheries because we could grow. We just need to build the capacity of our people so that they can be the ones working. Uh, seek out and apply for other funding to enhance and improve equipment or expansion of our fisheries. Those are things that we are planning for the new year. Identifying other possible positions for fisheries as well, in, even in the administrative structure, as well as for each um, of our facilities that we handle. Improved communications, recognition of our, our fishermen, team building, and information going out in the newsletter. And finally, community distribution program and plan so that we're giving the community the opportunity to have lobster as well as snow crab and shrimp. Thank you. Well, all the My name is Dorothy Gideon. I'm Portfolio Counselor for Public Security and Public Works Infrastructure Hana Housing. Oof, due to COVID-19 this year, it's been rough, but our policing team has been increased. They've been doing trainings to keep our community safe. Our fire Fire, fire Department Prevention Week 
with cleaning chimneys and also other stuff. Our public security is involved in many different events, including parades, community activities, Halloween and Christmas, and the Chez, Chez Trois <laughs> at the powwow grounds. Um, also due to COVID-19, our housing's been on a slow side, but hopefully in 2000, 2021, we'll be able to do more. Um, with taking the safety measures, our workers are essential. And let's hope in 2021, like I said, we'll be able to do more. Uh, I really enjoy working with my teams. And I'm a little bit nervous, as you can see. <laughs> and with everything, I'd like to thank everybody for your time. Everybody at the Gaskabaya band, you guys got this. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Marvin Kondo, uh, Police Chief and Director of Giskabigia. I am here today to, re to present the information annual report for the last year's activities for Giskabigia Public Security. I'll be talking about the list of officers, the statistics, and the crime prevention has had been done. So last year, uh, Franklin Condo was a chief of police. We had officers that are were Tommy, Dave Loisel, Dave Robichaud Condo, Sarah Robichaud, Alex. There were about in all we had eleven officers. So, and to go to statistics now, uh, the I'm going to mention the codes, but I'll basically cover the, the infraction type of infractions. The uh, type of infractions were like crime against the person. We had 79 cases. Crime against property, 61. Crime criminal code violations, 54. Controlled Drug and Act, Stop Substance Act, we had nothing. Other federal status violation, we had three. Provincial status violation, we had 53. Municipal, municipal bylaws, we had zero. Traffic violations, we had 11, total of 261. Uh, every Each year, we have a requalification of pistol. And they have done those in the fall of 2020. And one member of assault rifle 223 model uh, in this summer of 2020. We have uh, an infraction ending with debts, not zero. We have sexual assault cases, three. Assault codes, simple assault they call them, 54. Violation for freedom code, we had one. Violation involving violence and threats, 27. Then we had uh, part A, which is from code 3410 to 3630, 30, we had 14. And we had 6450 code, it's 53. And the codes from 9110 to 9530, we had 11. Intervention codes, like assistance calls, we had 149 numbers. Alarms, we had two. Road accidents, we had 19. Investigations, we had 14. Warrants, two. Lost and found objects, none available. Police interventions, 275. Found and stored vehicles, five. 
total of 466. Uh, we have submitted to the Crown 62 files, authorized by the Crown 38, closed by the Crown 24. And I'll talk about prevention, what has been done since last year, 2019-2020. Uh, they had uh, the director's meeting. They went to uh, school powwows at the school and traditional powwows, Halloween safety, Father's Day events, Father's Day event again at the ball field and Christmas events. So to finish off with all that, I would like to thank you for your listening out there, and I'll be seeing you again. Thank you. Well, all you. My name is uh, Armin Martin. I happen to be uh, one of the counselors uh, here on the Geska Big Yard. Oh yeah, not to forget uh, housing too. Uh, housing is a very important thing here we have on the res because we seem to never have enough houses. You know, we're about 77 houses behind right now as we speak and uh, everybody wants a house which is normal. You know, uh, but it's not as easy as we think. Sometimes, you know, it's, uh, you got to go through uh, uh, what I think they have going right now with the housing committee as a priority list and all that. I'm not even 100% uh, sure how that works, but, uh, and on top of that, I think the housing committee right now are looking for new members for the housing committee because uh, there are some other members uh, that dispersed a while back, so they don't have a complete housing committee. You know, it's nice to talk about stuff and jabber about stuff, but hey, let's, uh, if they're looking for members, why don't we uh, try to find some members and uh, try, try to, uh, you know, interlock with ourselves instead of fighting with each other. How come this, how come that, and, you know? Uh, it would be more fun if we, we would have a full team so we could uh, uh, gladly leave you people know what's going on. But then again, with this COVID-19, it sort of screws every goddamn thing. And I bet you, you guys out there are thinking when I'm going to swear. Could be pretty soon or any time. Yeah, with this COVID-19 going on, it sort of screws up a lot of things. You know, you just don't want to walk into a, an elder's house and start to look at this and look at that. Some, some people don't mind. Uh, some do. Uh, you know, you got to walk in with a mask and they got to have a mask. You got to make sure your hands are clean and whatnot. And you know, some people are not ready for that and you can't really blame them. So, you know, you have to uh, respect their uh, wishes, whatever they want. Uh, not to forget, uh, Madeleine, I still have you in the back of my mind. I remember telling you I was gonna go over to uh, visit your house. Uh, I understand uh, you have a lot of problems too in your house. Uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of people that have asked me or either what they do, they send a letter to us directly to our council meeting and whatnot. And sometimes uh, we're handed out like uh, Dorothy Gideon would be the portfolio housing. I believe uh, Gary was the portfolio housing. I'm just a helper on the portfolio housing, but uh, I seem to be uh, doing uh, a lot on that. But uh, most of the time there now, uh, you call 
Dorothy getting up and she will try to work out your situation and if not she usually calls me because if there's meetings uh, we have one-on-one, -on -one, one on two meetings uh, sessions with people right in front of us here at the office and uh, write down exactly what their problems were. Like the elders too, I've had some elders uh, call me and tell me, could you come and take a look at this, come and take a look at that, and I would go there and I would write down whatever I said. Hey, I don't do miracles. I go when I'm called, I take notes, I bring it to the council. Then the council is supposed to uh, tell the housing committee where to go with that, but sometimes uh, there's a lot of red tape here and there. A lot of it probably is just screwing around, but sooner or later we'll get around because, you know, it took a while to get to Cora's, it took a while to get to other people, but finally, you know, after cursing at chief and council for the longest time ever, they finally did get around to them and uh, eventually it'll be your turn too. Uh, you can be sure of that. So pretty much uh, in a donut, I guess, uh, that's about all what I'm doing uh, in attending all the council meetings. And of course I attend the walk one meetings, but right now it's just Zoom meetings, you know. And you know what I think about Zoom or, you know, uh, even what I'm doing right here, I could uh, just kick that s behind that, that camera he's holding there. Uh, I don't care, f but that's the way it is for now. You know, what can I say? Anyway, I appreciate you folks uh, listening to me, and uh, sooner or later uh, we'll get back to you one way or another. Well, all your home said one. Thank you. Welcome to our fourth annual AGA. So I work for Community Works and Public Works. I'll start off with Public Works. This year we had done a little bit of uh, Bakta Bay. We have, I think, altogether 20 spots for housing. We did Gul uh, Guskosi Lane for the, about 150 feet with the water, hook up the sewer, uh, getting ready for our. Motor, our duplexes. Uh, we did some work at the cache, leveling it off the, one of the big garages and started off with the solar panels until the other guys took over. And that's about it with public works. And uh, we did the grass cutting with my crew. We also, we did the fishing. I think we caught 20 some salmon for the community, for the elders. We bought maybe a thousand dollars worth for the community. Uh, <clears throat> we're on our moose meet. Uh, my crew, I want to say they got 22 moose altogether. It's being butchered right now. And uh, I'm sure after the holidays, we'll start to deliver. We got our flatfish for the year. We got some partridge. Uh, smelt season will be kicking in soon. Plus right now we're doing the elder shoveling and salting and plowing. And it's been a rough year with this COVID. You know, a lot of damn time we spent uh, with rules and regulations. But we're getting through it. And uh, if I did forget something, I'm sure Mac will add it. Go ahead, said when. Meski tango in the else about the dike. Don't get rude, limon no blal yak. Dan de will will look at the yok. A dan de will give not yok. I'm said when and no egg at the yellow web, which is subway now, don't go in the yak. I'll get rid of him coming in no Sama, I think Sama will all yak. Many Nantel go on learning a Tesco and Nuktibunkweg, Hilia of Mal planning. A planning of cheat made under me when she go more liado, than the Missanguan liado. Out deal, a public building at Lugadamego. Where she dwag up slowly away, Gabin no lewick took. Six hundred thirty-eight thousand dollars. Which is a pump house. It looks like a man. The electronic panel saw say what they got. My own electronic panel must be software. Go a saw say what they got. 
uh, emergency fire pump pila yung sase sase water sip a generator diesel generator ni dan ibis si lam kung tuwala des nen na pila pila yung alas nen elk tal jali ko yung noe gadi a may bembo ko yung mga juino nani gay rukci ro ap tibi ako den samguan rukci dam sedwan a kay rukci ro ap dan del ko luk samguan then he goes to the contractor and says, Well, the plot is clay. He says, I can't even go to the pump house. I can't go to the community wells. I can't go to the test pump site. I can't go to the test pump. Note, I can't report. I can't go to the test pump. Then he goes to the Consultant, tak kau sewa lalu, bukti dulu don plan, don kisi naskah lalu desno mak ami kau. Panabas la plan, mohon aktes kewe, mohon nadi lga ayano. Edel bi bani mohon nok, keru bi bani mohon nok kilo. Sedua ni nuaga dik don del dasu tio, well dasu ada mo, keru sah sewa lalu koi, down koi. Pas duduk ciri orang del dasu tio. Now kaad wan aktes kewe. Take a copy of the video presentation of the video presentation. I'll give you 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 the video presentation. Hello, my name is David Kondo. I'm the construction supervisor here in Gascabega. Construction, new construction and repairs here in Gascabega. Uh, last this year we had approximately 15 to 17 employees we built two three-bedroom duplexes on Gascosia Lane which uh, will be uh, will provide room for four families we also built a, a big eight-bedroom house on Lin, uh, Lin, uh, Innu, excuse me which is good for a fa nine fa nine person family we unfortunately we had a fire on Buck the Bay, so we had to rebuild the a six bedroom house, uh, which will uh, which is done. Also, we had elder repairs. We did siding, we did uh, roofs, we did change windows for band repairs. We changed windows and. We also have renovation when tenants move to different units or to bigger units. We still we also have renovations to do there. Uh, so this year was a great year. We had a lot of success, and uh, hopefully next year will be just as good. And um, that's it. Thank you very much. Hi, um, my name is Chana Metallic. I'm the Director of Education in Gescabekiak, and I'm here today to report on our annual general report for 2019-2020. Uh, just to begin, we have to address the COVID-19 pandemic. So beginning March 2020, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic proved a challenge for staff, students, and families. Uh, we quickly had to adapt to a new educational reality based on unprecedented uh, virtual connections and at-home learning. Uh, Wetchik Obaniak closed on March 13, 2020 because of the pandemic and one week after school closed to in-person learning, the staff began to teach virtually. With the assistance of the First Nations Education Council, all staff and students had the proper technical supports to learn and teach from home. Uh, the education services at MIN team, we teleworked from home and we met virtually. 
uh, telework continued into the new year. Speaking specifically about Wachikobiniak School, just to introduce it briefly, it's a community school in the heart of Geskabegyak. It's a unique in its delivery of the Mi'kmaq language and culture program to all students. The staff there is dedicated and they support a culturally appropriate approach <laughs> to Geskabegyak students' education from nursery to grade eight. Uh, often this is not visible, but if you're in the school, you, you see it daily. So also with Chikubiniak, um, they were proud to host the First Nations Education Symposium. In May 2019, uh, they hosted the, this big symposium. And during the gathering, First Nations educators from 14 different communities traveled to Geskabegyak to attend and deliver workshops on First Nations students' educational best practices. So uh, these these people that traveled here work with First Nations and they were able to speak about that because First Nation learning can be a unique process. So nonetheless, the gathering was a success and First Nation school teachers embraced the opportunity to share their education expertise and there was a lot of connections made during this time. Uh, Wachiko Biniag is also lucky enough to be working with this organization called Youth Fusion. Um, Youth Fusion is there to help students discover nature, express their abilities with the support of the school ecosystem and the community. So it's a very holistic approach. The partnership is ongoing and it centers on uh, normally on the environment and on entrepreneurship. In terms of sports and activities, Wachiko Beniak, um, the big event of the year, was the FNEC Games, and in May 2019, student athletes from Geskabegyak traveled to Laval University in Quebec City to compete in the 12th annual First Nations Education School Games. Student athletes from Geskabegyak competed in various sports against a record-breaking 680 other students from 16 communities and 22 First Nations schools in Quebec. Uh, students from Wachikobaniak also participated in and attended local and regional sports competitions, including soccer and track and field events. Also, it was a, something of a big deal, but there was a global climate strike day. And on September 27, 2019, students and staff from Wachikobaniak joined millions of others from over 150 countries who marched in their communities to support the youth climate strikers who demand and are demanding to this day an end to the age of fossil fuels. Um, it's their generation that's going to feel the impact, so they're there protesting. It's lovely. Uh, Literacy Week uh, in February 2020 each year, Wachiko Biniak celebrates literacy through a variety of activities. This year, which or last year actually, Wachiko Biniak challenged students with various reading challenges and staff asked students to dress according to the theme of the day. Wachiko Biniak also uh, holds an annual book fair and in this time it happened in October 29 and Wachiko Biniag was able to use a portion of sales to support student activities. Literacy is a big thing in most schools and it's no different in Wachiko Biniag. So during 1920, Wachiko Biniag provided additional training to staff on the use of LLI. Um, the LLI is a short-term intervention designed to promote daily targeted individual and small group literacy instruction to supplement what's already happening in the classroom. There's a member of the Wichiko Biniak staff who is trained to serve as an in-house support, so if any other teacher needs help, they go to her. Um, in October 2020, Wichiko got a, received a new principal. Uh, Sheila left her position as principal to begin working at the FNEC as a special education counselor. Um, the Mi'kmaq of Geskabegyak hired Selin Martin to replace Sheila. Uh, this, this was abrupt, with the, we had to post really quickly. Uh, Selin was a former student of Wachikobaniak and she was also at the time a teacher. And she began her new uh, job in 2020 of October. In terms of Mi'kmaq language and culture, it is the heart of the school. And um, to celebrate that, there's normally a big celebration on Treaty Day. So October 2019, they celebrated Treaty Day by providing a big community feast and staff and students had the opportunity to teach and learn about their treaties. Uh, also at Wachikobiniag in 1920, we're planning to build on the cultural practices and activities that are already a part of the school. Wachikobiniag does have a long tradition of incorporating local traditional practices such as hunting, fishing, gathering that support Geskabiniag's jurisdiction over their territories. And this is normally integrated right into the academic program. So it, it's a fabric of the school. Uh, sad. Uh, we were really sad to um, say goodbye to Mary Capelin. She was a fantastic member of the Wedgko staff, and she passed away in January of 2020. 
Um, Mary taught with kindness and passion at Wichigobaniak in different grade levels, at different grade levels. And she was often replacing the principal. She was in a leadership capacity. She's a valuable and caring member of school, and, and she's still dearly missed by her students, coworkers, and, and staff, and myself. Uh, parents got to attend the Regional First Nations Community Involvement Gathering in November 29. So a group of parents were uh, selected to travel to St. Sever, Quebec for this third annual parent conference, and it's called, uh, this year it was called I'm Involved. Conference uh, on First Nations Parental and Community Involvement at the FNEC level brings over 136 participants to one spot. Over 18 communities were there represented this year. And parents, teachers, and school principals gathered, then they shared ideas and they networked and they, yeah, they watched experts speak about different topics from homework to uh, technology to bullying and so on and so forth. In terms of educational services overall, we have transition team and we have meetings. So to better meet student needs in the provincial system, particularly those at New Richmond High School in the secondary grades, uh, officials from these different educational sectors from the provincial school and from Geskabegyag met with administrators at New Richmond High School. A particular concern for Geskabegyag was the work-oriented training pathways program, and this has been an ongoing concern. And there's fears that um, New Richmond disproportionately places students from Geskabegyag in this program. So discussions on that matter uh, began and continue. And there was consensus on the committee to address these general concerns and to plan to improve student transition from Wachikobiniak to New Richmond High School. The transition team developed a preliminary action plan to support uh, Geskabegyak students and initial activities focused on cross-community collaboration in academics and community awareness. Some action items also included um, regular meetings by teachers at New Richmond High with Wachikobiniak teachers and, and to have joint professional development opportunities including the possibility of developing a cross-school professional learning community. In terms of post-secondary, Kateri Martin, uh, student services coordinator, she, she was able to conduct two big visits out to students in two geographic areas. Uh, she also attended the INSPIRE conference and the FNEC parental and community involvement gathering. Um, she also served as liaison between the provincial schools and the education sector here in Geskabegyak. She also began preliminary work to determine the feasibility of a bachelor's program uh, delivered locally and so people locally can attend right in community and this was to increase community member opportunity again to pursue a degree. Um, in terms of the education board, they, they met in 2019-2020 uh, to gather information and, and discuss important issues, including its mandate. Uh, there's a draft terms of reference to design the function of the board, and it's ready, it's ready for review and discussion. In the next year, elections for new board members will take place. Thank you.
All right, I was told to give it a couple of minutes. See how many people we can get in here. Then we'll start it up. Uh, I'm assuming people know how to play, but I'm not sure. But I'd recommend opening a new tab and having it on the side so you can see the questions and answer it. All right.
start. I see no key cannon sticks, I'm not sure why. So we're going to start it now.
All right, Emily. Uh, you can probably message someone in chat. What's the price? <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I'm being told we can probably play another one. <laughs> <laughs>